So shooting pro wrestling, lighting conditions change constantly. Unless you're working specifically on a televised product like WWE, Impact, MLW, you're going to be dealing with some changing lighting conditions because most productions can't really afford a lighting rig. They typically prioritize that budget towards talent. Who can blame them? So I'm going to be showing you guys some of the equipment that I use to light an indie wrestling show professionally, and then I'm also going to take it out into the field tomorrow at Ronin Pro Wrestling in Pembroke Pines, Florida for a field test. Let's see how it goes. So this is where I'll be testing out my new CTO Balance Evolve 200s here in Pembroke Pines, Florida at Ronin Pro Wrestling. The venue here is a college gymnasium and we're just gonna be using the fluorescent lighting overhead. Gym fluorescent lighting, depending on how old or new it is, can be totally different in color temperature. The things I pay the most attention to when I'm walking into a venue are three categories for the lighting. Output, consistency, and color temperature. Output is most important for a venue's lighting because I need to know how much of it I need to augment, how much extra lighting I'm supposed to bring. A college gymnasium is gonna be somewhere in the middle between TV and random dive bar. Consistency is not a problem for a gym like this. All these lights are pretty much putting out the same output. The third one, color temperature, that's the tough part for a gym like this because fluorescent lights can spike green or pink and are probably gonna hover around 4,000 Kelvin for the color temperature. So it can be real curious as to how you're gonna light. Me, I'm just saying fuck it to the lights that are built into the venue and I brought these guys CTO balanced strobes, which means that my lights are gonna be balanced around 3200 to 2900 Kelvin. So you set the camera to the tungsten setting, which is about 3200, and that's what you work from. So what that's gonna do for me is it's going to evenly light the ring with a clean color temperature, and then drop off the background, the crowd, and the venue itself into a cooler color. So it might look a little bluish. It's a style choice, but it's one I'm gonna try out tonight for the first time. I learned that from a swimming photographer when I was in Atlanta. He shot Michael Phelps like that. That seemed really cool, so I'm stealing his style. Talent borrows, genius steals. The light itself is the Evolve 200 from Flashpoint. It's the same as the Godox AD200. I didn't get the pro version that just came out because it's on back order for a month and I didn't want to wait. I added a little reflector that you can buy from Adorama for like 15 bucks and then I added some CTO gel, which I bought a big sheet of 20 by 24 inch and cut a few pieces into. I'm gonna be cross lighting the ring with these two on opposite sides up about 12 feet pointed down about 20 degrees. If I could go higher, I would. You always want your lights to be at least taller than the ring post. If you can get any higher than that, great. So the highest I can go on these is about 10 to 12 feet. That's what I'm working with, that's what I'll make do. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna be shooting the show on the Canon EOS R, so I'm bouncing between photos and videos. The video is gonna be balanced for whatever the venue lighting is, probably around 4,500, but the stills will all be 32. So now let's set these things up and see how it looks. shoot this rap segment but understandably they're playing a bunch of music to get the ring crew hyped to get the ring out of here because it's about 10 45 I don't know how late they have the building but I, I mean I'm not priority I get it so I'm just hanging back chilling how are you doing I hope you're doing well if this is the last song that would be rad I don't know if this is the last song I hope it is is it good? Show's over, eight matches down. Uh, quick thoughts on everything EOSR, 
testy, but got some good stuff. The Evolves, fantastic. Uh, continuous autofocus at 2.8 in a flatly lit building while using a Pro Mist. Probably a bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, but I did, and I learned for you. Uh, growing pains. New gear, trying it out on a paid gig like a dummy. Sometimes that's how you gotta do it. It is about 11 p.m. I started shooting at 7, show ran until about 10.30 with a 15, 20 minute intermission and a 20 minute break after the first match. This was my very first time shooting with an EOS R on a show, photos and videos. First time using a Pro Mist. First time using full CTO gels. First time using Flashpoint Evolve 200s. A lot of firsts, a lot of variables. I was scared I wouldn't be able to make it through the show and so I had my 5D on standby. Did not need my 5D. I went through two full uh, LPE6 batteries over the course of the night. These guys, the Evolve 200s, who have been firing at half power all night, being on for about four hours continuously and shooting about four to 500 frames, they still have two thirds battery, over 60%. Uh, definitely impressive, something I'm happy to see. Uh, looking forward to working with them in the future. Issues with the EOS R for doing action photography. The five frames per second wasn't even worth considering. I really had to just think of it as a single frame at a time, especially working with these strobes. There was a lot of delay, so you had to be really careful to make sure that you were firing exactly at the apex of any action. If I missed the direct moment of the hit or if I shot too early or too late, then that's all she wrote. There was no bursting, so it took away that aspect that I've been comfortable with on the 5D, the 1D, the 7D Mark II. That wasn't an option, so it was very much single shooting. Also, I was confused. I thought you could keep different color temperatures when you switch between photo and video. Uh, for my testing, you can't. So I was able to keep different shutter speeds and different ISOs, but color temperature had to stay the same. That meant that even though I was balancing CTO and had the lights, or had my camera set for 3200, I had to keep my camera at that for video, even though the main lights in the building are around 4500 to 5000 Kelvin. So, footage is gonna be fun to edit, hooray! <laughs> Basically what it comes down to is this camera's got a learning curve and it's not the most ideal camera for what I'm trying to do, but I'm confident enough in its abilities and my own abilities to give it a chance again, to work with it again. Next weekend, I am in Chicago for Major League Wrestling. I get to shoot photos and videos, but at totally different times, which is way easier for me. And I'm gonna give it a run there as well. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time when I'm in Chicago.